Hello, and welcome to the Argyle CMO Leadership Forum. My name is Nick with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. I have some important information to share with you, and then we'll turn the floor over to our esteemed opening keynote speaker. We also welcome you to stay socially connected during today's event. For those of you who are active on social media, please use the hashtag Argyle Digital and follow us at Argyle Exec Forum. Also, be sure to follow Argyle on LinkedIn for special announcements. I would like to take a moment to touch on our content neutrality policy, which we have curated based on the feedback we have received over the years from our members. We have worked closely with our speaking faculty to ensure that you receive a set of balanced and neutral viewpoints during the session today. And we appreciate our members' support of this policy. Finally, and most importantly, we want to hear from you. So during each session, we encourage you to submit your questions and comments in the Q&A box on your screen. Following each presentation, we have set aside time for our speakers to weigh in on your questions. Thank you again for joining us today. Now, let's get started. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Debbie Gann, Vice President, Marketing and Business Development, Armada Supply Chain Solutions. We're excited to have Debbie for her opening keynote presentation titled, Using MarTech Tools to Personalize Your Marketing. Welcome, Debbie. Over to you. Thanks so much, Nick. And I just want to say how much I appreciate this forum and the opportunity to share my experience, what we're doing, and, and to feel part of a you know such a broad community to talk about things like this that are so vital to the jobs that we do every day. Um, I guess you probably would like to know a little about how I got here. So I'll tell you a story. Um, when I was in college, I worked for a really big company and absolutely loved it. Had the opportunity not very much later after I'd graduated, maybe worked a year or two, to leave that company and start a company with four other people. Um, what we quickly realized was that we had had such great luck having infrastructure, having collateral, having brand recognition, having all of those things that are so important to be able to get your message out, and we had none. So where to start? Um, certainly necessity was the mother of invention, and that's really what happened. Started from the ground up, understanding that our goal really was to sell. So when we were selling, we needed things to, to share with people, give people our story, tell people about our products. And that really began this love affair that I have with this whole industry. The idea that our being able to sort of form ideas and form pictures for people and tell stories to people so that they can kind of buy into what we're doing or see themselves in the problems or solutions that we have was really meaningful work, largely because we really needed it to, to continue to sell and to continue to have a business. Um, fast forward many years later, many iterations later, um, have spent the bulk of my career in supply chain, but also in technology. And so the idea that we have this ability to leverage technology to help us do our jobs better has always stayed with me. And I think it's really important. Um, I think like any good marketer, what, what I would like to do is really start off so that we're all on the same page. Um, I Googled, I don't even know, maybe 10 or 11 companies um, for their definition of marketing technology, right? So um, should not be controversial. Um, pretty much everyone said the same thing. Technology uh, describes a, a, a bunch of software or tools that assist in helping us achieve our marketing goals. If you use that together in a group, with a team, it really is considered a marketing technology stack. So nothing too controversial there. Everybody was pretty comfortable across the board saying that. Here's where the wrench gets thrown in. And um, I, like probably many of you, turn to some of our industry experts. And, and I have always um, looked you know, from a pillar standpoint and, and who says what about anything. Well, Gartner had something different to say. They added the word integrated into their definition. And I think that really sets the stage for what we're gonna talk about today. Um, is, is sort of this group of tools useful without being integrated? Absolutely. Can you get more value? 
from being integrated and sort of leveraging the best of, of everything across the board, I, I'm almost certain you can. And how do you go about doing it? So those really are the, the kind of conversations that I'd love to, to have today. And um, I, I feel like most of these could probably be a session on their own. So look forward to continuing the conversation. Um, before I move to the next slide, I wanted to give a shout out to the folks who put this slide, the next slide together. Um, Chief Martech and Martech Tribe, just for the yeoman's work of, of trying to give us an exact uh, footprint of the digital Martech landscape. So um, I feel like my work here is done. I think we can now safely move on. But 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 as a, you know, all kidding aside, I think if nothing else, this whole notion of a, a marketing technology map, so many things jumped out to me. Um, the fact that there are pillars in this map that have then subcategories is certainly huge, but just the depth and breadth of the companies that are involved, each one of those tiny little dots in this mosaic is an actual company that represents a product or service in that pillar. Um, when you think about that as an, as an industry, it's clear to see that this is a continuously growing, evolving, and changing industry. And, and I will say, though, the last couple of years have certainly been filled with um, mergers and acquisitions and, and companies joining and sort of evolving their purpose. Um, but even with all of that consolidation, we are typically seeing between a 9 and 14 percent growth rate in, the, in this industry alone. Um, and so I think that brings up another, you know, sort of key question for me It is sort of so what? Um, how do you leverage the technology and how do you use these products to help you get to where you're going? If you cannot clearly answer what you are hoping to achieve, what your desired effect is, your end state, um, what your, you know, who your market is, then honestly, I don't know that any of the products on this map would help you, right? I think that's really the first goal. Um, and once you figure that out, then I think you can figure out where you, you go here. Um, a couple of other things. I know that many of you are probably on this journey or well on your way on this journey and maybe are just looking to, to solve a couple of niche opportunities where some of us are really just at the beginning and, and, and going on it. So is there a right place to start? Not really. Is there a wrong place to start? I'm sure. Um, again, the whole notion of understanding what you are hoping to achieve will lead you to the technology solution you want. Now, if we're to, to buy into Gartner's integrated conversation, then I think a couple of other things came to mind when I was looking at this. Um, the first is which I, I don't know of any company out there who has an IT staff just sort of waiting to, to help you out, right? There's always a long queue of, of opportunity for them. And, um, you know, you sort of take a number and get in line, maybe based on priority, maybe based on company goals and objectives. So how do you work with your IT folks to, you know, to be able to leverage all of this information? Um, I will say a couple of things that we did that I think were very helpful. We always leverage our IT folks and have to, you know, have to have our, you know, sort of our plan blessed by them, if you will. Um, so whether that's due diligence, understanding, um, you know, the, the security requirements, um, the terms and conditions, uptime, all of that kind of stuff um, obviously has to, has to get the sign off of our IT. Um, where we started, I would say, is a little further into the map, not necessarily at the, the front of the advertising and promotion, and I'll tell you a little bit about why um, in a minute. But the thing about picking a product, right, is that you need it to do what you need it to do. There's, I am constantly distracted by all the opportunity, by all the cool features, by all the the new technology, but I continuously ask myself, is this what the business needs if we're trying to get to our desired effect? And once we've standardized on that and it's been blessed by IT, I think one of the other things that we've done that and consciously done is look to that company's partners. If there are already integrations 
to other products that you're looking at, I would tell you that really matters to me. Um, if you have the ability to, you know, to leverage work that is already done. I know that takes a load off our IT. Maybe they just get involved to make sure they're happy with the way data is flowing as opposed to having to write um, or use APIs to connect things. So that's, I think that to me, you know, kind of sums up this, um, you know, technology at a glance and where do you start and how do you go? One more thing though, I think that is really key for me is just understanding what functionality matters to what I'm trying to achieve? What will give me the most bang for that buck? And as we've talked about, IT is certainly a, a, huge, um, a huge component in that evaluation. Once you have the product, I would say two things. Um, make sure your people are comfortable with it. We, I think we do such a disservice in terms of, of not thinking through how this affects people's lives, how this changes their jobs, this, um, you know, sort of new processes, new procedures, all of that. Do your folks even have the skills that you need them to have in order to leverage this technology? And really then right in there is the sweet spot. Um, the ability to take great cutting edge technology gives you the value, gives you the desired outcome that you want. And all the while you're giving your people better tools to, to do their job. I think the other thing that that is so important to me, and I have been um, maybe less conscious of this process um, and, as I started and far more conscious when I understood they work hand in hand, right? Sales and marketing have always gone hand in hand, and there's no point trying to sell something that nobody even knows who you are or what you do. Um, so we really look at this sales process as the buyer's journey, um, and it marries step-by-step step with our go-to-market strategy. Now, our go-to-market strategy is, is very clear. We understand exactly what we want to do and how to do it. There's always nuances, there's always new opportunities, and this isn't just sort of a one-shot deal. Um, the, the whole ability to get people down, maybe even to the preference and things happen, so you start again, right? You wanna continue to build that um, relationship with your buyer. So where I would say now in my current role, we um, have focused probably a lot less on the, on the brand recognition. Our industry and, and the market we serve is, is very narrow. Um, we have, uh, I have a company that has a, a very long life. So um, I, I'm less worried at that point in terms of my brand awareness. Most of the people in our industry are aware of who we are. Not to say we don't continue to try and educate new people and how we do it, we'll talk about it in a minute. But the whole notion that you can leverage technology to get you from where I would say sort of the middle of consideration all the way through, you know, keeping and holding customers is where we had traditionally focused um, the bulk of our technology um, infrastructure. Interestingly though, because of technology that we have developed, um, we have a whole new market. And so we are right back at the very top trying to build brand recognition and awareness and tell people what they do uh, or what we do and help them understand or see that we could maybe help them with their initiatives or solve some of the problems that they have. Um, so in terms of that, I think that the other part to mention, and I will say this um, 100% full disclosure, um, our business is B2B. Um, most of my experience has been truly uh, B2B or B to a very specific consumer market, um, never been direct to consumer. So the whole uh, probably would take a whole other webinar anyway to talk through all of those nuances. So I'll touch on it when I can. But we certainly don't have a loyalty program like a, you know, buy four fifth ones free or buy one get one or any sort of interaction from an app standpoint. But what I can tell you is our goal is to get and keep customers for life. And it's really important that we do that. We do it in a variety of ways. Um, I think the whole notion, again, is, is sort of looking at those pillars um, from an advertising standpoint. Um, do we, you know, uh, I, I would say just sort of 
full blanketed advertising doesn't work for our market. So we are very acutely aware, um, certainly leverage keywords, leverage a software platform that helps us see what the market is doing, see what people are searching for, understand um, the opportunities, which has sort of leveraged our ability to place maybe either an, a, a, a short video, a case study, a white paper, introductions to a webinar, customer testimonial, things like that, um, where they can see them, but generally not a blanket advertisement. In that consideration phase, we certainly want to strengthen people's opinions of our continued capabilities and our success in our particular field. So to leverage that, we might use something, for example, like um, a, a webinar that we host. We might also have um, the opportunity to showcase a product or sponsor a content or something like that. That's super important to me. Um, I would tell you from a, you know, from a, a continued loyalty standpoint, again, not a rewards program necessarily. We have a very long sales cycle, so we don't really get to leverage um, a platform. Um, we don't have an e-commerce site. We don't have any omni-channel. Um, but the whole notion that that is sitting there, that other parts of our business certainly do have a more transactional nature and can actually leverage, um, you know, a CRM with credit card or credit app kind of um, infrastructure exists, and we continue to watch it to see if it can be helpful to us. Um, I think finally, just the, the last sort of set the stage before we talk specifically about those pillars. Um, here's what I say all the time. We have so much technology that is so helpful. And how do we leverage that in order to get to the people and make sure that we are not marketing the way we hate to be marketed to. Yes, your CRM can send 15 targeted emails. Yes, you can have a drip campaign. No, you shouldn't space them 30 seconds apart. You know, that sort of thing, um, I think is something that we think about all the time. And again, what's our end goal? What is What are we trying to accomplish? Um, and then this, this is the biggest part of the conversation. How do we make it personal to that person? And, and if we're going to go there and really look at account-based marketing or even person-based marketing, how do they want to engage? Um, McKinsey and others have done tons of research on this. And, and, you know, interestingly, being in the supply chain industry, I feel like we say this, the, this phrase all the time. These are unprecedented times, but they really are. This is the first time in, in our known history that we have the ability and, and have the luck and the fortune to market to four different generations. Um, the minus is they all have different goals and they all have different ways they want to be marketed to and they all have different ways they'd like you to engage with them and they all have different ways that they'd like you to serve up content. So, um, you know, again, not to muddy the waters, but looking back at all the choices in the MarTech stack, looking at all the ways to meet our customers where they are, um, it's certainly maybe fraught with risk, but also such great opportunity. Um, I would say, you know, from our experience, um, especially the last couple of years, we are starting to see our, you know, our executive group phase out, retire, move on to other things. And, and as that occurs, we're seeing a seismic, seismic shift in some of the, um, the customers that we serve and their demographic. Um, super, con you know, focused really on how do we give people the right content at the right time at the right place and that it's personal enough that they feel engaged and feel like this is part of a relationship built not just a blanket sales campaign from an advertising and promotion standpoint i said you know this was probably not the area that we started and i'm i'm really glad we didn't what i do think we we focused on and what we really and and I have done sort of uh, time and again across my career is focus in those two middle spaces, um, content and experience. Right, I think there's 
no possible way now we can say um, we don't understand that the user experience is important. Um, every day you pick up your phone and you get content served to you in the way that you want to consume it based on algorithms, based on um, machine learning, right? Um, it's certainly something we want to talk a little bit more about, but I will say our biggest bang for the buck has come in this whole content experience. Finding the technology that allows us, this platform that allows us basically to put everything that we've ever done in one place, um, to be able to hashtag it, to keyword it, to um, you know, sort of plan so that it can be repurposed and reused has been really, really valuable. So that platform that we standardized on um, was absolutely essential for my business because we uh, again, are a, a, a pretty long-lived company, so doing a complete website rewrite, understanding what things people want to see and want more of has been vital for us in how we show up in our, our user experience. So our content allows us to see things, and again, far less interested in in an individual's preference, but as a collective, you know, are people wanting more quick, short explainer videos? Are people wanting, um, uh, especially if they're doing research, right? And and um, the Gen Z folks, they're certainly happy to go out and do the, the due diligence in search of their truth. But if they need a white paper, um, what is a white paper today? Is it 10 pages? Is it two pages? We found it's one. Um, Three bullets, if people are interested in those, a paragraph, if people are interested in those, a full page. Obviously, links to the full-blown content can be found and, you know, gives those researchers and people who want to, to seek the truth, um, you know, access to be able to do it. But what we found is just by placing our content on that hub, we have the ability to see what works and what doesn't. And then obviously focus on doing more what works and, and less on what doesn't. Um, so um, not only being a content hub, but really an asset management, right? So any of the digital and, and really everything we do now is digital. So probably should just be AM, uh, not DAM, but the whole idea of, of that uh, asset management. Um, again, our, our focus is sales um, from a product standpoint, but also a service. So the ability to have all the product information at our fingertips, how to coordinate it in conjunction with what we are seeing from a content standpoint, um, those two key things were very important to, to us to have linked together. Um, the ability to um, have people say, oh, if you're interested in this, you might want to read this or you might want to watch this has been invaluable. And we found that people who are served content that they um, can engage with will continue on that journey and we can see it in real time, which is, I think, really exciting. Um, having a landing page, we actually stand up a landing page um, on our content hub for every one of our new prospects. So having the ability to personalize their experience and their journey. Um, if we had a product demo, for example, we record it so they can go back and refer to it. Um, if they have colleagues they'd like to share the information with, obviously it's available there then for them to, to forward and share as, as they expand the, the information in their team, which I think is super powerful as well. Um, I would say that from our um, from our use case was was far more effective again because we typically know our market. Um, where we are starting to leverage though the advertising and promotion side of it, right? Um, from a content certainly we are already serving content based on people's keywords and searches and um, domains and people that they're looking for. Um, far more targeted, can't afford to, to market to the whole free world. Um, we certainly don't have the budget for that, but also realize it's just not effective, uh, effective for us. Um, while we get, though, the, the opportunity to see, and like I said, sort of the bright, shiny object, always keep my eyes on what's going on in that marketplace, what, um, what new functionality might be useful to us. Um, in any one of these pillars, but certainly as we are now expanding what we do, um, the whole notion of getting ourselves out there first as a brand, 
just so people can understand who we are and what we do, and then see where we can help them. I think that really is always our mission is anything that we do, we want to make it easy for people to find what they're looking for, find what is engaging for them and interact with us the way that they want to. Um, from a, a social media standpoint, we are certainly branching into that uh, realm as well and have been sort of watching that space. I, again, our product is very B2B. So interesting, it, just in terms of, um, you know, uh, uh, boosting likes, follows, et cetera, is always exciting to me. I love to see the bump, but does it really translate into conversion and does it really translate into new prospects for us? Um, for our social, probably, uh, I would say minus, um, you know, minus the business platforms that we, you know, that we all use, probably not. Um, are we on other social media, you know, the Instagrams, the, you know, the things like that? Sure. Um, do we want to continue there? Sure. Not, not necessarily, though, as uh, maybe more as a broader brand recognition, as opposed to necessarily reaching our, our target market. Um, I think I talked about earlier. Oh, one other thing I would love to say, I think as we are redoing, completely redoing our website, um, the whole notion of live chat, chat bots, um, you know, artificial uh, intelligence from a question and answer kind of thing, certainly fascinating to us and is an area we intend to leverage. I would say respectfully though, um, I, and I'm sure you've all been on a website where you're trying to get an answer to a question, and it is uh, maddening when you can't get where you're going. And I know there's been hundreds of videos of people yelling it into the phone or, you know, type mad typing on their computers trying to, to get to the, the right thing. Um, so our intent in using bots and intent in losing, using chat is truly um, to, to try and answer more of the frequently asked questions and to make people feel We've seen, we've heard, we commit to getting an answer back to you if, if, if the content that we have isn't um, meeting your needs, you know, here's the way to, to speak to somebody live. And I, I, again, I think it always comes back to that. People want to work with people. Um, and, and while we're conscious of the way that can help move things along, especially in the answering of easy questions, by no means is a is a substitute any you know in any of these areas. Um, uh, one more quick blurb on the on the retail platforms on Omnichannel. Um, we don't leverage it currently. It's something I keep watching because obviously as that evolves, there's going to be an opportunity to to do more there. Um, I will say this from our other side of the business and some of the products that we have, um, we leverage point of sale data from our customers and our customers' customers. Um, it certainly helps influence, again, on the supply chain side, our, our planning, our demand forecasting, our making sure we have the right product at the right place at the right time for the right price kind of conversations. And I know that that is such a huge interest for all of us. Um, and, and we will continue to, to leverage that. And as I said, some of our sister companies actually have the ability in their CRM to not only do credit checks and, and take credit cards, you know, sort of virtually, um, they may actually run through transactions they've never interacted personally with, you know, with the consumer. Um, and so that's certainly something we keep watching. Doesn't feel right or real for us um, in, in the space that we play in right now, but certainly things can continue to evolve. Um, the other thing I will say, and, and maybe the area that is has for us the biggest opportunity um, is obviously from an, an uh, just a, a automation and intelligence. In this case, it really was focused on sales automation and and anything we can do to continue to nurture a prospect um, all the way through that funnel to close is something we want to continuously leverage our CRM for. Um, Using the CRM alone, though, doesn't help. So we would use that in conjunction. And again, going back to those companies that have um, already um, bespoke or, or um, prescribed integrations is really something that has benefited us. 
So seeing that people are searching, for example, on keywords that we might um, find super important and are maybe stringing phrases together that we know we have solutions for is the very first thing that we do. Once that happens, we have the ability then to start to figure out who they are, what their role is, um, something that, that I neglected to touch on through this whole thing is truly not only how do they want to be marketed to and, and sort of what role, but what persona. So we really have identified um, multiple levels of stakeholders that are interested in engaging with us. Um, if you do that, then you can serve the right level of content to the right person. And in this case, in the sales automation space, that's exactly what we do. Um, certainly well aware that somebody who might be taking on a project of that magnitude in supply chain would probably need to know more details and facts and figures where maybe somebody who might be financially or um, functionally responsible for the product or project would have an entirely different set of goals. Um, so leveraging our automation, leveraging our personas, understanding and continuously, you know, trying to, to read what the market is leaning toward or what big buzzwords are coming down the pike really allows us to, you know, to have the content and to make sure that we stay super tightly aligned with, with what our customers want. Great, Debbie. Well, thank you again for such an excellent keynote. Um, we're uh, running short on time. Sure. But uh, yeah, thank you again. And I want to thank everyone else for joining us today. This session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. 